Hello, my name is Sinu Reddy, and I'm the Director of Cardiac Surgery at TriStar Centennial Medical Center in Nashville, Tennessee. Our group performs approximately 1,100 heart procedures annually, and we're a community-based teaching hospital. In this video, we will talk about the complexities of cardiac surgery that increase the risk of hemodynamic instability. We'll also discuss the benefits associated with hemodynamic decision support algorithms. Finally, we will provide examples of how post-cardiac surgery hemodynamic challenges can be assessed and managed with the help of advanced hemodynamic parameters. Cardiac surgical patients are complex and at high risk for hemodynamic instability, which is associated with post-operative complications such as acute kidney injury, an increase in their length of stay, and increased cost of care. These patients traditionally present with many comorbidities. Among them are poorly controlled diabetes, underlying kidney disease, and many coexistent cardiac conditions such as hypertension, acute or chronic heart failure, or underlying lung disease like COPD. Due to these comorbidities, these patients are typically on multiple medications at baseline that may affect their perioperative hemodynamics. Many cardiac surgical procedures have become more complex over time. Due to the advancements in percutaneous techniques and coronary stenting, operations such as the common three-vessel coronary bypass grafting have become much less common as standalone procedures. Far more common are patients with combined valve and coronary disease, poorly functioning ventricles, and patients that need additional procedures such as the maze procedure to treat atrial fibrillation or aneurysm repairs. These combined factors create the milieu for more hemodynamic issues as we come off cardiopulmonary bypass. Many times, these patients have had longer cardiopulmonary bypass runs, have more acid-based perturbances, and may have some dilutional anemia. Once off cardiopulmonary bypass and the chest is closed, these patients arrive in the ICU, often with ongoing hemodynamic issues. Simultaneously, there's a transfer of care from the anesthesia team to the ICU team. Here, there's much opportunity for variability in care from team member to team member or based on the experience of the critical care provider. The implementation of decision support algorithms utilizing advanced hemodynamic monitoring may allow for variability reduction and overall improvements in care. Standardized approaches to understanding the underlying hemodynamics, volume and vasoactive medication utilization, and correcting metabolic derangements can all positively impact outcomes and the care of the post-cardiac surgical patient. My institution saw important reductions in variability of care for the patient by utilizing support tools such as the Acumen IQ sensor in our post-operative patients in the intensive care unit. This effect was seen in real-world settings across three different institutions, all caring for complex cardiac surgical patients. In essence, we were able to see important variability reduction while improving outcomes such as time on the ventilator. When thinking about the individualization of patient care, another important consideration is which monitoring modality is most appropriate for each patient and each procedure. In my facility, we find that the majority of our cardiac surgery patients benefit from the minimally invasive approach to decision support and patient care standardization via an Acumen IQ sensor. Some patients still benefit from the Swan-Gans catheter if they have mechanical support devices such as a balloon pump in place or an impella, if they have severe RV or LV dysfunction, or if there's a diagnosis of pulmonary arterial hypertension. Whichever modality is ultimately deemed optimal for the patient, the Hemisphere monitoring platform allows for simultaneous use of any combination of technologies, including cerebral and somatic tissue oximetry. Now let's look at how advanced hemodynamic parameters can guide clinicians through the identification and management of common causes of hemodynamic instability in cardiac surgery patients. One of the most common underlying causes of hemodynamic instability in post-cardiac surgical patients is suboptimal volume status. It is common for patients to experience frequent fluid shifts due to the post-surgical inflammatory state, the cardiopulmonary bypass hemoconcentration, and even ongoing blood loss from the surgical field. This can be accurately recognized and assessed by using dynamic advanced parameters that are available at the bedside, such as stroke volume and stroke volume variation. 
One of the most reliable methods to evaluate a patient's volume responsiveness is the simple passive leg raise maneuver. By essentially providing an autologous volume bolus and looking for an increase in stroke volume of at least 10%, we're able to assess if the patient's circulating volume can be increased without the risk of over-resuscitation. Another common finding in these patients is some component of vasoplegia. This is due to factors such as the release of cytokines from the stress of surgery and cardiopulmonary bypass or from the underlying action of preoperative medications, such as angiotensin blocking drugs. This typically presents as a high output, low afterload picture with a decreased SVR, systemic vascular resistance, often in the presence of hypotension. This is an appropriate time to consider the addition of common vasopressors, whose management may be optimized utilizing dynamic arterial elastance, or EADYNE. You can find more information on EADYNE using the link in the description below. Finally, these patients are at risk for reduced myocardial contractility in the immediate postoperative phase of cardiac surgery, commonly referred to as low cardiac output syndrome. This can be related to myocardial stunning from ischemic arrest or a delayed recovery after cardiopulmonary bypass. Utilizing the trends of continuous parameters like cardiac index and DPDT, the change in pressure over the change in time, can assist in assessing the adequacy of cardiac function. This additional information can aid in the selection and in the utilization of therapies to improve contractility, such as inotropic medications. I hope you have found our discussion about utilizing advanced hemodynamic-based decision support algorithms for cardiac surgery patients enlightening. Evidence-based methods like these may serve to decrease unnecessary variability in care, which ultimately may decrease the potential for adverse patient outcomes. Tune in to the next Critical Insights episode where we'll continue our conversation on advanced monitoring. Like this video and subscribe to stay up to date on clinical educational videos, symposium recordings, and more. Thank you very much.